In Unify Protect application, if you go to a adopted camera under settings, scroll to the end, you can see this section, menu recovery. You will see this recovery code. You may wonder what it is, in what situation you can use it, what's the history about it. In this video, let's talk about this recovery code. It's very possible you may take it for granted, thinking it is for re-adoption to another console. So let's validate whether that's a case or not. On the screen, in the upper side, you see two UNVRs. So in the left side, it has the G3 instant adopted. In the right side, you can see the G6 instant is adopted. At the same time, they are also showing the camera for the other side of UNVR, which is showing yellow color. So let's say now from the left side UNVR1, I do want to re-adopt this G6 instant. If I click on it, it shows this screen. For some reason, Ubiquiti refuses to implement this reassign option from the web user interface. You have to use your phone to do that. No big deal. So in the lower left, I'm showing you my phone. I'm in the device list for the same UNVR1. So you can see for this G6 instant, it says tap to learn more. Let me tap it. Okay, so you see slightly different UI. Here I do see a link to reassign to this console, which doesn't exist in the web interface, right? By the way, on the web interface, you do have this other adoption method, but disappointingly, it only tells you you can reset the camera. Of course, I don't want to do that. Go back to the mobile phone. Let me click on the reassign to this console. See, it's immediately adopted. It's so fast, so convenient. Now from the left side the UNVR, I can see both cameras. Then in the right side, the G6 instant is showing gray color now. Okay, basically this means so-called recovery code is not really used in the re-adoption process. Then what it is for at all. Let's talk about the history of the recovery code first. In the past, Ubiquitous Protect application has a advanced setting. It's called device password. It's a single password used by all the devices managed by the console. However, starting from recent Protect application update, Ubiquiti changed the strategy. Now, for each device, it has its own distinct recovery code. And the setting is changed from the Unify Protects global setting to each individual device setting. Next, let's discuss how we can use it. Then we can explore how it is implemented. Normally, you manage your adopted cameras using the Unify Protect application, right? However, there's another way. The camera supports separate web access. So from the Unify Protect, we can find out the camera's IP address, right? In the lower left screen, if I type in this IP address in a web browser, See, I got this login screen. The password is the so-called recovery code. So I copy the recovery code, then paste to this logon screen. However, we are still missing username. Traditionally, Ubiquiti uses UBNT as the default username. Let's try it. UBNT login. See, I'm in. We successfully log on to a brand new, very simple web UI. We can see the video in real time. We can do some basic settings. In fact, everything you can see in this particular web UI, you can do the same, if not better, by using the Unify Protect. Then you may ask, what's the point by providing this separate web UI, right? In fact, the purpose is already in the name of the code. It's for recovery. So for whatever reason, if you cannot access your camera from Unify Protect, as long as you know the IP address of the camera, as long as somehow you know down the recovery code beforehand, you can still access this web UI to get the control of your camera back. 
By the way, don't think if you have issue accessing the camera, you have no way to see the recovery code anymore, right? No, as long as you still have access to the console, you can still get the recovery code anytime. See in the right side for this UNVR2, the G6 instant is even showing offline here. But if I click on it, go to setting, I can still see the recovery code. So you don't really have to, for example, hack into the Unify Protect database to copy all the recovery code. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Okay. And this web UI also provides some additional functionalities which don't exist in Unify application. In the system tab, you can upload whatever firmware file, then you can manually upgrade it. Here you can see detailed technical camera logs. And more importantly, here you can reset to default. Of course, if you have physical access to the camera, you can do it, right? But sometimes if you are remote or sometimes if the camera is mounted in a place which you don't have easy access, then you can use this convenient way to reset it to factory default. So you don't have to set up your ladder, climb to very high place just to press the reset button. That's it. That's the whole purpose of this recovery code. Having seen how the recovery code works in action, now let's discuss how it is implemented. So let's start from the initial state, which is now you have a brand new Unify Protect camera or you have done a factory reset. Now you need to adopt the camera, right? So far in this video, I used the G6 instant as an example. The fact that it is connected using Wi-Fi make it difficult to demonstrate how the recovery code works during the initial adoption state. So this time, let me use a different camera, which is a G5 Flex. It needs Ethernet cable. So in the right side, the Unify network application for this switch, you can see for the part one, it is connected to this camera. I can see it and it also has a IP address, even though now it is not adopted to any console yet. You can confirm just from this pop-up in this UNVRY, right? It is ready to be adopted before doing the adoption because I know the IP address, right? Let me try to type in the IP address in this browser. See, it's connectable. Let me ignore the warning, visit the website. I see the exact same logon screen, even though this time it's a different camera. Based on our last time experience, we know the username is UBNT for password because this camera has not been adopted yet. Of course, I don't have any place to find out what's the recovery code, right? In fact, for this special status, Ubiquiti uses a hard-coded password, which is UBNT as well. Let me type it in, UBNT, login. See, I'm in, which means before the camera is adopted, the recovery code exists, but it's hard-coded as UBNT. So then let me proceed in the upper left UNVR, adopt this camera, it's adopted. If I go to its setting under the menu recovery, review the recovery code, you can see it's not UBNT anymore, right? Then where this recovery code even came from, it's generated by the console during the adoption process. Then the console will save this generated recovery code in its database in clear code, but the same password will be hashed, then saved to the camera as well, so that the camera can authenticate the user if in emergency case. So the user can use the recovery code to directly access the simple web interface. So the code is generated every time when you adopt the camera. Just to confirm that's the case, remember we removed the G6 instant from the right side UNVR, then adopted to the left side, right? So if I go to the right side G6 instant, even though now it's showing offline, I can see it's recovery code. If I review it, then left side in the green 
online G6 instant. If I show the recovery code, you can see these two are completely different because every time if adoption happens, a new recovery code will be generated and will be saved in both the console and the camera. Okay, I hope it's clear. Before ending this video, let's briefly mention SSH. In fact, this recovery code is also used by SSH for the camera. However, it doesn't work in a very easy way. I will have a dedicated video talking about how to enable SSH to unify camera. So here I only want to simply show you if you just want to directly SSH to your camera, let's say this G6 instant, I get this IP address from UNVR, then in the terminal, I use UBNT to access the IP address. Why UBNT? Because from the left side web UI, we know the username is UBNT, right? So if I try it, the connection is refused. So the camera is not opening up the SSH service at this moment. That's why you need additional steps to enable SSH. I will cover that in my next video. Okay, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching.